Are you looking for a lunch that is filling but won't do too much damage to your bites and points for the day? I have the perfect solution for you here with this combo. Yes, you're getting two recipes for the price of one. This is my creamy tomato soup and my Monte Cristo omelet sandwich. These are delicious, satisfying, and under six bites for the entire meal. So if you'd like to see how these are done, stick around because it's coming up next. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today you're getting a two for one special. We're doing a soup and sandwich. Now both recipes are mine, but the sandwich is something that I picked up from the internet I think early in quarantine, where people were doing these omelet sandwiches, they called them. But I have adapted that to be not only low bite and low point, but also to be more reminiscent of a Monte Cristo sandwich. But we are going to start with the tomato soup. So let us go over the ingredients quickly. This is a quick and easy tomato soup. There's no tomato peeling, no blanching, nothing fussy. Quick and easy, and extremely low bite. So I have my cooking spray. I have a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I have a third cup of fat-free half and half. I have here about three quarters cup onion that's been kind of finely chopped. It doesn't have to be too fine because we are going to blend it at the end. You won't have to blend it if you don't want to, if you like those little chunks in there. But I am going to blend it because to me a tomato soup is smoother than what I would get if I didn't blend it. I have a cup of low sodium chicken stock. I have here a quarter cup of grated Parmesan. That is about 18 grams. Here I have a tablespoon of lightly dried basil. If you wanted to use fresh, I would use two tablespoons. And you can also add some at the end if you want a little garnish. One teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. With this jaw, I can't say it, and yet I still keep using it. One tablespoon of sugar replacement, which may seem an odd item for a soup, but the sugar replacement, and I use Swerve, which is a one-to-one -one swap for sugar, if you're using something that's not one-to-one, -one, you'll have to figure out the ratio to equal a tablespoon. That's just going to help cut down the acid from the tomatoes. And you can adjust that to more or less if you want. It's a sweetener, so it's not going to add any bites or points or calories. I have a tablespoon of minced garlic, which is basically three cloves minced. If you don't want to use the garlic, if you want to reduce the garlic, add more garlic. It's totally up to you. Same with the onion. You can play around with that. And a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. So those are all the ingredients. I have my soup pan over here, just a medium pot. I have my pan for my sandwich after. But we're going to get started on the soup. So let me shuffle a few things around and we will begin. Okay, so for the soup, what we're going to do, I have my medium saucepan over medium heat, and I'm going to just spray the pan fairly liberally. It doesn't have to be too crazy, and I'm going to need that for the sandwich, so I'll keep that to the side. Then I'm going to add in the onions, and what you're going to do is just saute these for about 10 minutes until they've softened and started to get a little color. And you can see there are some strips in there and things. Like I said, don't worry about that because we are going to blend this. And again, that's optional. If you don't feel like blending, then don't blend it. But I'm going to let these saute for about 10 minutes, get a little color, get it softened, and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes getting some color in there. So what I'm going to do next is add in the garlic just to let that get fragrant for a few seconds. Usually about 30 seconds is all you need. 
just until you can start to smell it and it's a little mellower flavor, not that sharp, bitter garlic that you think of when you think of raw garlic. Okay, so that's good. Now we're just gonna add in all of the other ingredients except for the half and half in Parmesan. Those will go in later. But for now, we're going to add in our tomato and wearing a white apron was probably not the smartest idea on a day that I'm making tomato soup because as you can see, because the pan is hot, it will start to splatter. White and tomato don't really go, but no one ever said I think things through. Okay, so we just want all of that in there. Then the chicken broth, basil, sugar replacement, the Worcestershire, what's this here sauce? The Worcestershire sauce, forget the sauce. The quarter teaspoon of pepper. So we're just going to bring this up to a boil, stir this all around so it's incorporated because you want to make sure that you've thinned out the tomatoes with the soup because you're not making tomato sauce you're making tomato soup. So you need it a little thinner than what you would normally get. So I'm gonna just turn this up to medium high to start getting it heated up until it starts to boil. Then we're gonna turn it down, but I'll show you that step when we get there. Okay, so we are at a boil. It took maybe about two minutes for everything to start to heat up and bubble. You can tell it's about ready when you see it start to bubble and then you stir it and then the bubbles immediately come back when you stop. That's when you know you're at the right point. So what we are going to do now is turn this down to medium, medium low, somewhere where you can keep the simmer. We're gonna take the lid, make sure your saucepan has a lid and only partially cover it because we do want a little evaporation, but we don't want it to fully evaporate and become, as I said, tomato sauce. So this will sit here for 10 minutes. I will stir it on occasion just to make sure the bottom isn't sitting on the heat for too long. And then I will be back. All right, so our soup's been simmering here for about 10 minutes and I've been stirring it on occasion. You don't have to babysit it too much, just stir it a little bit on occasion. But you can see it's still thin and it's still got chunks of our garlic and our onions in there, which is fine because we are gonna blend it as I said. Now we're gonna add in our Parmesan and I add that in before the half and half just to give it a chance to melt a little bit in there. Stir that through until you don't see any of the cheese. Then we're gonna add in the third cup of half and half, the fat-free half and half, and stir that through. And you can see it's getting a little lighter. This is more of a creamy tomato soup. If you didn't want the creamy aspect of it, you just wanted tomato soup plain, you could leave that out, but you just might have a bit more of an acidic soup. Half and half helps to calm down the acid a little bit. So we're gonna let this come back up to a simmer because I added the fat-free half and half. It may take a minute. While I have that minute, I'm gonna be using my immersion blender. But if you are using a regular blender, I've gone over this before when I've talked about blending soups, because they are hot, when you start to blend them, it starts to build up pressure. And the pressure could blow the lid right off of the blender, which is why they have this little thing in here called the fill cup, because it allows you to fill the blender with things. What you would do is make sure you take this off, pour your soup in here, put the lid on tightly, then take a clean dish towel and put your hand loosely. You just want to kind of loosely cover it. This is going to allow us to keep things from splattering all over the place as it blends, but it will also reduce the pressure of the hot soup whirring around in there by letting some air escape as well. That's all there is to it. But I'm going to use the immersion blender because that's just a little bit easier. And you just wanna warm that cream through and it's steaming, so that looks like it is good enough to me. So I'm going to take my 
immersion blender and just start blending to get rid of the chunks of garlic, break those down a little bit, as well as the onion. It will also more finely chop up the basil. And if you're using fresh, you can add a little bit of extra basil after you've blended it. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this off before I start and I'll be back once we're done. Okay, so our soup is ready. You can see that you're no longer seeing chunks of the onion in there. It's all been blended through. Our soup is ready. Let us move on to our sandwich. Okay, so the soup is sitting there staying warm for now. So let us get started on our sandwich. We're gonna go over the ingredients. As I said, this is a Monte Cristo style omelet sandwich. It was a fad for a while early on in the pandemic that I saw this and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I got to try it. So I've just adapted it a little bit. And if you're not sure what a Monte Cristo sandwich is, typically it is some mustard, some Swiss or any cheese really, but typically Swiss, some ham, some turkey, you make the sandwich and then you dip it into an egg batter, kind of like French toast, and you cook it that way. And so it comes out kind of like a French toast sandwich. So let me go over the ingredients. I have my trusty cooking spray here. I have two eggs. They are at room temperature and you could use three if you wanted to and didn't mind adding the extra calories. Um, it wouldn't add any bites or points, but I decided to keep it at two because two seems sufficient as long as they are large eggs. Um, but if you wanted to add another egg and want make it a little more eggy, you could easily do that. I have two slices of low bite, low point bread. This is the Fryhofer's Italian um, 40 calorie. I think it goes under another name in other areas of the country but I will use that. Sometimes I will use the Sara Lee 45, which is one bite each. It all depends, but I usually keep it to one bite a slice. Some of them, once you get to two slices, it goes up to three because of that WW healthy math. But I have two slices here. I have two slices of ham. This one is just the smoked ham in the little container, like Oscar Mayer, Hillshire Farms. They have those packages that it's like one serving, which is two ounces, is one bite. And I have two slices of a similar turkey. Now, because these are two different items, when I input them into the recipe builder, it is adding another bite that it shouldn't be. And I'll tell you why. These are each two ounces for one bite. I only have an ounce of each one, but if I put them in separately, what it will do is calculate them separately and it adds a bite. I want to keep it as just the two ounces of meat. They're combined. So what I did was when I input the turkey, I just hit that it was a zero bite food so that it wouldn't calculate into the sandwiches bites or points. I did mention this in at least one of my healthy tutorials, even though it came up as zero bites in the app for just two slices, once it added into the whole recipe, it added the bite. So what I had to do was mark it as a zero bite food to bring that back down to normal. You could leave it as it is if you don't wanna play around with it, but I am only using two ounces of meat here and I'm not gonna spend an extra point that I shouldn't be spending. Then I have two slices of fat-free American cheese. Now, two slices for the one that I'm using is just one bite. Depends on what kind of cheese you use. This is a store brand from a local store called Price Chopper. I believe they have other stores that are called Market 32. That one and Stop and Shop or in other regions, it's called Giant, are where I find the best low bite slices of cheese. So I always go with either the Stop and Shop brand. Store brands seem to be lower in bite sometimes, like in this case, 
and that may be because they're not adding extra things to make it more creamy or whatever they're doing to try to keep you coming back. It's a store brand, so usually they don't try to pretty it up and that saves us on some bites. But just input whatever you are using into your recipe builder of your app and you'll be fine. And last thing is I have one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And that's because a typical Monte Cristo usually has some mustard in it. But we are not going to be putting it on the bread. But I will show you that in just a second. Let me just shuffle a few things around and I'll be back. Okay, so for the sandwich, we're gonna start with the eggs and the mustard. We're going to put the mustard into the eggs, and I know that sounds odd, but the way we are going to prepare this sandwich is not going to allow us to put the mustard on the bread. So we are adding it here to get that mustard flavor in here. And I'm just gonna take this and whisk this up and you could add a little salt or pepper if you'd like. The mustard has a bit of saltiness, so I'm not worried about adding salt to the eggs, but you just want to beat these, but you know how to beat eggs. I'm sure you really don't need to see this that much. So that's going there. Now bring in our pan and our cooking spray, and I'm going to set this over medium high heat. And since we just had the soup on here, it's probably going to heat up fairly quickly. Spray the pan, especially around the edges. Okay, the pan is heated up. I'm holding it about an inch above and I can feel the heat on my palm. That sounds good to me. So I am going to take the egg mixture. Now this goes pretty quickly. I'm going to add in the eggs and then quickly take our bread and get it into the egg, then flip it. And you want the feet of the bread, the bottom of the bread together as this cooks. You just want to let this sit for a minute or two to let the egg start to solidify the omelet part of this. Okay, I'm breaking in here quickly just to show you that this is the spatula I should have used because before you put the cheese and meat on your sandwich. I should have flipped it, and I knew I should have flipped it, I don't know why I didn't flip it, to let that egg cook on that side. It is written in the recipe correctly, but just so you know, I should have flipped it before putting the cheese and meat on there. Now back to the regularly scheduled program. And once it's there, you're just going to take the ends that are sticking out on the side of the bread and fold those up onto the bread so that they're going to be inside of our sandwich. If you can, this side's not doing it that well, but you can fold it up against the sides of the bread. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to put a piece of my cheese on each side of the bread one side on each. I'm gonna add the turkey and a little bit of freshly cracked pepper and then the ham and a little bit more pepper. You don't have to add the pepper, that's just my embellishment. Then we are going to take this edge with the, just the cheese on it and we're gonna fold it up over onto the other piece of bread. Now you can see on this side, I did miss a little bit of the bread at the edge, but it's not gonna be that big of a deal. And it kind of looks like an omelet the way it is placed right here, which is how it got called an omelet sandwich. Although I think of an omelet sandwich as a sandwich with an omelet inside of it, but that's what they called it, so that's what I'm calling it. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a minute, then I'm gonna flip it and let this side cook for a minute. And then we are done. Let me grab a knife so I can cut into it and show you all the deliciousness that is awaiting us inside. So just about a minute on each side. Okay, looks good to me. 
Remove that from the pan, turn this off, and cut it on the diagonal, or you can cut it any way you want. I'm just one of those people who prefers my sandwiches cut on the diagonal. There you can see our nice little Monte Cristo omelet, omelet sandwich. So let me shuffle a few things around, get things cleaned up, and we will be back to talk about bites, points, calories, and macros. Okay, so we have our sandwich. We're gonna serve up some soup. Now this soup makes four servings, and they are about one cup each. And a ladle like this is typically around half a cup. So two of these ladles, and just pray my arms stay steady for this. Or I'll have more than just a few little splatters on my nice white apron. And so there you have it, our creamy tomato soup with our Monte Cristo omelet sandwich. Let us go over the information for the creamy tomato soup first. This serving, one cup of the soup, is just one bite, one blue point. I'm on the healthy, better balance plan, which is the equivalent to the old WW blue plan. So based on that, hopefully you can figure out your personal points. But it's one bite for a cup of soup. And if you're following calories, one cup of this is 118 calories. And if you're following macros, the fat would be 2.3 grams. The carbs would be 22.2 grams. The fiber would be four grams. And the protein would be 6.7 grams. And that's using the ingredients I used and put it into the recipe builder as you do it with the ingredients you're using. Now for our omelet sandwich, this is four bites. Now, as I said, regarding the meat in there, it did try to make it a five bite sandwich, but because I am using only two ounces of the meat and that is one bite, I did adjust to make it four. If you wanna keep it at five or you wanna add more meat to really take it to a five, that is totally your decision. You do as you need to do. But for me, this sandwich is going to be four bites. For calories, the calories are 335. And if you're following macros, the fat is 12.1 grams. The carbs are 23.9 grams. The fiber is six grams. And the protein is 30.1 grams. And again, as I'm making it here. So a lovely little lunch. You could have the soup prepared ahead of time. Just heat that up while you're making your sandwich. It's a delicious way to break up your day. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and these recipes. And if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you were looking for recipes that can help you on a weight loss journey. Share any of my videos if you think there's someone out there who would appreciate the content. And hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. As promised, there is another healthy app covering some of the basics as well as how to manipulate bites on there to mimic the old color plans on WW. So that will be coming up sometime soon, but hit the notification bell and you will be alerted. The recipes for each of these will be down in the description box. They are their own separate recipes. I just decided to combine them here for a soup and sandwich combo that you can make for only five bites, not bad. But the recipes will be down in the description box directly, as well as the link to my blog and my Amazon storefront, my Built Bar rewards, my Fetch rewards, and my social media. Here is my Instagram handle if you'd like to follow me over there. And there are two Facebook groups that I'm part of. One is mine, Recipes with Roy, and the other one is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H. And that one I co-admin with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. So join us over there. There's lots of great tips, tricks, recipes, support, and people. Now, one thing I did want to mention is this is coming out on April 22nd. Tomorrow, April 23rd, is the one-year celebration of my channel. My very first video came out on April 23rd of 2021. And if you'd like to see what that one was, I did it like a do-it-yourself cream cheese for zero bites. 
and an introduction to who I am and why I'm doing this, that will be a link down in the description box as well. But I just wanted to thank you all for subscribing. I'm almost at 2,500 subscribers within my first year. I really appreciate all of the support and I thank you very much. To celebrate, I'm going to go enjoy myself a little lunch. So until next time, bye. Thank <laughs> you.